Oh, hey there, YouTube hunters. Bragget Speed here. So I finally got this guy off of the clay under sculpt. Um, took a little bit of working, but it came off nicely. So I'm pretty happy with it. Um, basically, what I've just finished doing is adding um, some more epoxy sculpt to certain areas um, where, like, I held this up to the light and I could see that at the nose there it was very thin. Uh, so I add a little bit more there and I knew that would be a potential issue because the, the design of this mask I wanted to hide the fact that there's a nose to give it kind of a skull like feature So in order to sort of build out far enough, you know, you had to make the, no the tip of the nose be the thinnest part of the sculpt But once trying it on I've got plenty of room back there so I can very easily add more material and not have to worry about it And I've also added some more material around the edge of this because this is where sort of the bindings for the leather work are going to be and it needs to be strong and I'm going to run a file across this to give it a nice straight edge so also there was a small crack that sort of came into the I don't know if you'll be able to see it in the epoxy sculpt when I was taking this off with sort of you know prying it off with screwdrivers but that's not a big deal because again I can strengthen it up with more epoxy and there'll never be sort of that sideways pressure put on those two pieces again so not a big deal um, Fairly happy with where how it came out. I've tried it on top of uh, this mask, and I think I'm pretty sure I'm going to scrap that idea because it doesn't really add a whole lot to it. Um, you really, your eye really is drawn to this piece, so I don't know if there's much point in having it on top of that piece. I can just do a slight makeup job on the actor, and then it'll it'll look pretty cool. Um, the teeth, when I put them in here, I put them in so that I was happy with the mouth shape as I was sculpting, but I wasn't sort of tied to the teeth being there. Um, permanently if I could wiggle them out and then just sort of re-glue them in during the painting phase or after the painting phase I would have been fine with that but they're in there really well I was only able to wiggle one or two of them out so I'm fine with that I'll just leave them in there and just sort of be careful in the painting stage um, the um, hmm what else can I say about this oh yeah this so again this eyebrow ridge here sunk sort of sagged with the weight of the epoxy sculpt as I was uh, working on it. So I got some Dremel work to do to take that out and get it to look more like this one. One of the things I do when working on a pack epoxy masks that's kind of neat is that you, you kind of decide on each side which feature you like better and then you make the other one look like that. So, you know, I really like the way that this, you know, this bone here looks. So I'm going to try and make sure that that one matches it in shape. And that's the great thing about epoxy sculpt masks is that you can, you know, if I want to strengthen up this eyebrow ridge, I can add more material there. And if I want to reduce the impact of this one, I can dremel it away. You want to get really close in the sculpting stage because, you know, you don't want to spend nine years with your dremel uh, on it. But, um, you know, that's where you go. I've got lots of cleanup work to do, you know, I'm sort of around the edges of these things. There's some very sharp edges that just came from the sculpting process. Uh, focus, focus, oh, hard to focus. Uh, so I'll run the Dremel around these sort of sharp edges and smooth it all out, get rid of this little um, thing on each side. And so it's nice and totally smooth on the inside. And again, I'll file the edges and, you know, there'll be lots to, um, to work at on the Dremel stage. So I'm looking forward to that part of it. Again, this was, um, this is a technique, um, I learned from Bruce D. Mitchell's tutorial on the Stan Winston School. It's a two-part tutorial. I think each part is $40 or $20 maybe. I can't remember, but it's well worth it no matter what the price was because it's so informative. It teaches you about all different kinds of techniques, different approaches to art. And it's, you know, it's really funny too. Really, Bruce is a great teacher. Highly recommend it. And uh, I recommend this mask making process too because if you don't want to get into the world of, of molding, this is a you know a two-part mold to do a full head mask, and this certainly isn't a full head mask. This is a half mask, but I just the process is more immediately rewarding um, if you don't need to do multiples of something, and it's kind of fun being able to produce a rigid mask. Um, so, anyways, on to the detail work with this, and I'll update you as things go along as I continue with it, and until then. Happy hunting.